when I looked at this problem about 25 years after I've seen it for the first time, or maybe even more, 30 years, I realized that there is something very simple going on. You have a two by three rectangle, which has been tiled into very nice shapes. Three of those are the right triangles that we worked with, the two by one with legs. In the middle, we have our right isosceles, and then there is this funny scalene obtuse triangle. So we have tiled up, we have cut up our two by three rectangle into triangles. Well, have I seen a picture like this somewhere? It turns out, yes, for many, many years. So when I went to the San Jose Mass Circle, more than a decade ago to give a session, there was a warm-up problem and everyone received the same picture. And I was so involved in preparing for my talk that I didn't even hear what the question was being asked of the students. I put this in my folder, took it home, and somehow it landed underneath my keyboard underneath a protective cover. And it was there for about 10 years until we did remodeling. Then it got lost. And then with all the dust settling in two years, it miraculously reappeared and I put it back there again, not paying attention to what it was. But when I started preparing a session on this problem, I realized that I had seen something very similar before. And I pulled out from underneath the keyboard the forgotten picture. And then I started researching. This is, in fact, one of the most famous puzzles in the history of mathematics, which is uh, attributed usually to Archimedes. So the puzzle consists of 14 pieces, mostly triangles, a couple of quadrilaterals, and one pentagon. And as you can see, they fit nicely into a square shape. What exactly Archimedes was doing with this puzzle is not known, but the puzzle comes to us as the usual kid's puzzle where you make these pieces out of wood or plastic, you take them out of the square, and then you try to put them back. And the question is, in how many ways can you put back all of those pieces? Now, this is a different type of a problem. It's combinatorial. In other words, it counts how many ways there are to do something, like tile up the square with those pieces. But the resemblance is, is obvious. There is something connecting the two problems, just as a similar tiling connects many other problems in mathematics. The connection goes even deeper. So this problem, Archimedes' problem, was recently, fairly recently, rediscovered in the so-called Stomachion or Palimpsest. This is an ancient document which was being rewritten, erased, retyped, rewritten, and forgotten, and finally found very recently. And so the story about it is miraculous on its own. But when um, scientists started reading the uh, Stomachion and the Palimpsest and trying to make sense out of it, rediscovering the original writings, one of my colleagues from UC Berkeley, Professor Alexander Givental, conjectured that perhaps Archimedes was on his way to discovering trigonometry. And trigonometry has a lot to do with right angles and with ratios of their legs and ratio of leg to a hypotenuse. And so, if you look at this original problem, and if you don't feel particularly brilliant on any particular day to solve it, you may completely miss adding up those three squares. In fact, this is very rare that you would come up with this particular solution. But someone who is versed in trigonometry will find tangents of these angles, use a famous formula, and prove indeed that they add up to 90 degrees. Whether this will give more insight to the solution of the problem is a um, different question. But perhaps Archimedes, by doing his own puzzle here 2,000 years ago, was on his way to rediscovering uh, trigonometry, sorry, to discovering trigonometry. And perhaps if we gave him this problem, he would have solved it using trigonometry. Or maybe 
he would have added the three squares on top, or maybe he would have produced any one of the remaining 52 solutions in the article by Trigg. What, what actually are um, beta and gamma? What are the numbers for them? Do we know? We can uh, find them using uh, inverse trigonometric functions. So they're not nice numbers in the sense of the decimal system, but they can be found. So the question is why only three squares? Why don't you put four, five, or perhaps even, perhaps even infinitely many next to each other and ask exactly the same question? What is the sum of the angles alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 plus alpha 4 and so on and so forth? Would you be able to do a similar solution, a purely geometric one? Do you really need calculus and inverse trigonometry and perhaps series to solve this problem? Or can you find a solution which Archimedes would have felt comfortable with at his time? Can you? No, I cannot. But perhaps someone watching the video can.